Ciao everyone and welcome back to Growth Talks. Uh, I'm your host, Raffaele Gaito, and my guest today is Effie Bersou. Hi Effie, Hello. how are you today? I'm good. Hello everybody. I'm uh, trying to be uh, as loud as you to match our energies. I'm usually more mellow, but I will try to match your energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 quite late now, yeah. you know, and it's been a long day for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry don't worry don't worry about the energy but uh, thanks for being here um for for thank you for taking the time uh, you, you know i usually start with uh, you know this show uh with a simple question with a quick one uh let's talk about you so uh, just a quick introduction a quick yeah. introduction uh you know what's your background uh uh what you are doing right now you know any cool projects that you want to share with us okay uh so Hello again, everybody. I am Effie, Effie Bersou. I am a growth marketer and also I founded my own company three years back, uh, Growth Girls. It's a growth hacking agency or growth marketing agency, however you want to call it. It's actually the same thing, right? Um, and uh, you may guess by the name that it has to do with girls or women. So we say that it's a female powered Uh, growth marketing agency. Uh, now, how did I end up doing that in my life? Uh, well, I didn't follow any conventional routes, uh, even though I think no one in growth hacking has followed any conventional <laughs> routes. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, at least in my generation, I don't know about uh, kids now, uh, they have access to specialized courses. We didn't do, we didn't have that. Uh, so for me, it was changing like uh, three degrees in the university, not being content about anything, trying to do my own projects, learning to code on my own, trying to grow my own projects just because I was bored about everything I was studying, achieving to grow it, having a success, uh, turning the success into a profession for me, doing it for others, trying to, um, you know, I began seeing that hey, I'm good at that, people want it, and it makes me happy. So, I mean, that's three important things if you want to uh, choose your profession. So I ended up doing that, and through the years, I chose more and more challenging projects, met the right people, because uh, if you meet the, the right clients and work on the right project, it makes you a, be a better marketer, right? If you work on easy stuff, small things, and that's a message to the freelancers out there. I know it's easy to become a freelancer and pick into some small, like having 10 small clients, but it will not make you a better marketer. Go for the big ones and the, the, the difficult ones. That's what I, I did, at least. And I think that I became like a very, very good growth uh, marketer. And um, yeah, which led me to becoming a company owner at some point, uh, which is, some people say it's a natural next step. I don't think it is. It's totally different to be a great marketer, totally different to be a company owner, a leader, a boss, um, a mentor, you know. <laughs> uh, but for me, it came uh, naturally. Uh, it matches my personality. So... That's what I do. In the last three years, I'm a marketer and a company owner, and I continue to be a marketer. I'm a hands-on uh, uh, marketer, right? I don't just uh, have other people do the do the work. So I love what, it. what? Yeah, what I say is a founder-led company. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, a quick question about this: You said that uh, you know it's very different. Uh, being a marketer and being an entrepreneur, and it's not always a natural uh, step. Mm. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, in your experience, uh, what was the most difficult part, you know, switching yeah. from being just a marketer to be, a, you know, a, an entrepreneur? Yeah, for me, the most difficult thing uh, is when you are, um, I would call it like, like it is, when you are a boss, right? Because... It's similar to when you are a bachelor and you become a parent. You are so responsible for other people's lives. It's not like you can say, 
hey, I'm bored of working. I will just, you know, I have some money put aside. I will close everything and go on vacation. No, you have to be there always. Make sure the company uh, grows because you are paying people. You uh, are responsible uh, for their growth as well. Um, and uh, yeah, for me, I'm not a parent, but parenting advice has been very useful uh, in the way I, I handle people, especially when they are on, uh, you know, younger people like juniors. It's very, very similar. Uh, you have to make sure that you do what you have to do so people actually, you, you are allowing them to be the best version of themselves as professional and as people as well. So it doesn't come with being a great marketer. All, all of these need a special skill set, need for you to study, need for you to be a listener. Uh, you have to have a number of soft skills. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you have to absorb everything and protect your people from whatever is happening out there. I mean, we went through a lockdown. People uh, were afraid uh, about what would happen to their families, but also... Are they, are they going to lose their job? So you have to protect them. You have to be there, absorb everything, absorb the risk and say, hey, you're safe. Just focus on your work. Don't worry about anything. I'm here. Uh, so different than being a marketer who grows products, right? Nothing to do with it at all. So, yeah. And I don't think that, like I said, nothing can prepare. In the beginning, I said uh, nothing can prepare you to be a growth hacker. Uh, you, you cannot study it. I think uh, you can study some tactics, but you cannot study the mindset. I think the same with, uh, you know, having a business. You may go to business school, but uh, you will learn the hard skills, but you will not learn the soft skills that are needed. Well, a friend of mine that uh, he's a, a teacher in a, an MBA, uh, he once told me, uh, if you run a startup for a couple of years, you learn more stuff than, you know, paying for uh, an MBA. So that's probably... <laughs> totally. totally. And similar to, like we said, in marketing, if you go and work like uh, an internship or, a, you know, go into a company, you will learn way more than you will be taught in the university. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, true. And you, you, you were talking about soft skills. Yeah. What are the most important soft skills in 2023, uh, in your experience, you know, if you want to work in in marketing, if you want to work in, in you know, in the growth uh, field, because there is a lot of, you know, hype around soft skill, but yeah. most of the time it's just copy paste of the same content all around the web. Yeah. What are like two or three really important soft skills for you? So one that is very important for me, uh, especially if we're talking about growth marketers, uh, but it also applies to to life, right? is being able to adapt and change, embrace change. Uh, we see so much uh, things changing all the time. If we're talking about marketing, see this privacy focused era has changed marketing as we knew it uh, like 100%. So if you are a person who can adapt and change, but still being able to have your values uh, not change, right? Being stable in your values, but change everything else. That's a very important thing. Um, other than that, I, I think that it's very important also to be able to put yourself in other people's shoes, whatever that means. I know everyone says of this cool word now, empathy. I mean, okay, let's call it empathy. I think it's very important. Both as Again, in life, it's very important, but as a marketer, because what you do in marketing is like trying to represent other people's brands, other people's companies, uh, trying to market to all types of different people. So you cannot just talk like about things that represent you, that you like, that you understand. So you have to have empathy. You have to be uh, open to learn and understand and even if you don't understand like really try to respect everything that's going on uh in the world yeah that's that's so true i, I think this is probably the, yeah i mean it's it's a cliche but empathy in our job it's probably the most important thing right and 
I don't see a lot of empathy around there. You know, when I when I when I see you know uh, marketers uh, posting content online, you know, videos and blog posts and and LinkedIn. Yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't say that empathy is <laughs> is there. No, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about your experience, but most yeah. of the time, you know, I see some content. I say, oh guys, come on, where is where is the empathy in in that? I know, but I do feel like if I think about myself, the moments in my life where I, when I had the least empathy <laughs> were the moments where uh, I was very stressed. Hmm. So I think that if you're very stressed and very pushed by, by I don't know, what's going on in everyone's life, uh, you are in survival mode. And sometimes you may express that through your professional um, life, right? Through your professional media like LinkedIn. Uh, so because I think that we live in very stressful times mm -hmm. and our profession is very stressful as well, right? Numbers, numbers, numbers. You have to prove your worth every single day. Uh, I think that that may be the reason behind it. That's why I think it's very important to... As you grow up, uh, you know, when you, you are a hustler, you work all the time, but at some point you grow up, right? You mature as a person. The next step when you mature, I think is, uh, yeah, I, do, I, I am a hustler. Now I need to find balance in my life, whatever that means. Um, and I think it's very, very important. You cannot continue uh, being a stressed person because it, it turns you into a bad person pretty much. Yeah, I, I totally agree on that. Uh, it was the same for me. I remember, you know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, I thought it was cool, you know, working late every single day, yeah. every weekend, you know, uh, missing all friends and, and family and, and hobbies. And, uh, and now I'm, you know, balance yeah. is the most important thing for me. Yeah, exactly. But you have to go through that, right? At the mm -hmm. same time, I mean, we are saying that, but we are saying that uh, in the age that we are, in the position that we are, I, you know, and because people want to, to talk about that and talk about balance and, uh, you know, do not uh, burn yourself out or whatever, I think that younger people should take everything, you know, with a grain of salt. When you are 18 years old, do not listen to me. I'm talking about balance, but I did my hustling when I had the energy and the priorities were the priorities that I had 18 years old, right? Uh, so, you know, I hear the, all these young people, or some of them want to work with me. And the first question they ask is, uh, what time do we stop? Is there a life balance? And I mean, I get it. It's important to know these things. And it, it's important for me uh, to offer these things to my people. But it's it shouldn't be a priority if you are in this space. Like, give it everything you got, and this will allow you later on to have the balance. Otherwise, you will never have the option. That's what I believe, at least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were talking about your people. Uh, so let's uh, move there for, for a moment. Uh, so your agency, uh, Grot Girls, um, tell me more about it. I mean, why the project starting that way, how it evolves, and what's now Grot Girls? Yeah. So when I created, uh, when I founded Growth Girls three years back, uh, I wasn't thinking uh, about creating a female powered growth uh, marketing agency, as I call it. I was just thinking about creating my own company. Um, but it came uh, in a time that I had a number of experiences that were very uh, mind opening. So, for example, before founding my own company, I was a manager of other people and I kept seeing the same patterns. Now, my best people were always women. It, it happened, right? I'm not saying that women are better, but so it happened. But at the same time, they were uh, giving so much of, of their energy in stupid things. I'm going to mention uh, a recent example, and I think that <laughs> it, uh, I'm very glad that it happened because it, it really describes what a woman can go through. Uh, you know, like uh, two weeks back or last week, uh, there was this uh, journalist that asked uh, the prime minister of New Zealand 
if uh, she met with the prime minister of Finland because they were both women? I mean, what a stupid question to ask. And I was thinking, oh my God, this woman is a prime minister. I mean, she is head of state <laughs> and she still has to give the energy to answer to such stupid questions. Uh, if we scale this down to uh, whatever profession, uh, you know, and every, um, every role it's a uh, woman has, we all, uh, women have to go through, through similar things. And for me, it's not like, uh, you know, sexism or whatever. It's actually giving your, giving your energy in things other than your job. So, you know, all these things happened and I said, what if I do an experiment and what if I do a company which will be, which will give everything I can, everything I can offer to women to be the best person of, the, of themselves professionally. So no distractions. I will protect them from any, you know, toxicity that uh, they, you know, we we all have to, uh, we, we all have come across uh, during our lifetimes. Uh, at least within the company, these things will not happen. Plus, I'm going to offer them paid menstrual leave. They will be able to work whenever their baby is sleeping and not uh, have a gap in their career if they choose to. All these things. What if I do that? What will happen? Uh, so I did that. <laughs> and what happened is actually a very successful company. Uh, I am very proud of the, the quality of uh, our work. I'm very proud of uh, our people. I think that, um, you know, they are very productive. Someone told me, how can you be paying pe people to stay home just because they got their period, you know? And I said, you... The reason why you're asking me this is because you are not a woman. <laughs> if, uh, if you can rest when you need to, you will, be double, uh, you, have, you will have double productivity the next day. And I know that. And I know that, that this is what happens in my company. Um, so coming to today that, uh, you know, in the beginning, you know, the brand name also helped Growth Girls, you know, female powered. People were looking for that, uh, you know, based on their experiences that we had people wanting to work for this company, people wanting uh, wanted uh, to, to to be our partners. But now uh, I think we've uh, outgrown this. I think that the first reason why people want to work with us is because we do a very good job. And then, you know, I recently had someone who was actually a man, it, it, it wasn't a woman, uh, reached out, you know, we signed to work together. And after one month, he asked me, by the way, I never asked you, why do you call this company Growth Girls? <laughs> Does it have to do with girls? And I said, I mean, that's success for me. Because I, I didn't do it to attract clients. I did it because I wanted to say, hey, I'm going to make this, um, you know, um, like an experiment, like I said, offering the best I, I can give to women professionals. Um, and um, I, I'm going to name it so, so that everyone can read it and understand that, hey, if you don't share these values mm -hmm. or if you don't respect women, you, you won't want to work with us, right? So stay away. <laughs> the, the value proposition was uh, was there and was yeah. was was quite uh, you know clear. Yeah, uh, in your face actually. It's it's also kind of our, our logo is kind of pink as well, which I know it's you know people now with colors are white girls are wearing pink and they don't have to. I know they don't have to. It's a very dynamic pink, but I mean it was girly, right? So there. There you have it. That's the brand. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, uh, you don't like it and uh, move on. <laughs> uh, the, the, the person that you were talking about w w was a client, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. What, what about client in, in, in the beginning? I mean, now you have, you know, three years, you have a track record, you know, huge clients. Yes. But what about the beginning? Uh, what was the relationship with, with, the, with the first clients? 
yeah well uh thankfully for my company i it was like um i i had clients of my own before i started the company so i had a name in the market let's say so it was uh, the first clients were people that uh, knew me uh, before they knew my company uh, but then they liked the idea and the way we worked so uh, these women talked about you know they became ambassadors pretty much so talked about uh, growth girls to other uh, founders uh, that they knew so that's how it began word of mouth worked for us Mm. And, and well, I didn't, and I'm not uh, because I'm not you know we as data driven people are not uh, extroverts. I mean, at least I am not. So you know, I didn't participate in many events. There are many events about women. You know, I didn't go there. I didn't speak at events. I stayed away from that. But I'm sure that if I did that as well, that would also help. But I didn't do it. So in the beginning, it was just uh, word of mouth. Yes, in the beginning, it was word of mouth. And it uh, it continues to be word of mouth. But, uh, you know, we've built our inbound um, mechanism now. Um, you know, now it's three years after the beginning. So it's it's a different thing. Nice, nice. I like it. I like it. And, and yeah. what about the, um, uh, you know, you said that um, there was a moment where Let, let's say a, a switch. I don't know if switch is the right word, you know, but at the beginning uh, was really important to have the focus on the female power, you know, agency. Now it's less important. Was that natural or you, you know, you just, you, you realize, okay, now we, we, you know, we grow, we grown up so we can uh, kind of adapt. We can kind of change it. Mm, so, so first of all, I'm going to describe a very recent change that we did. Uh, when we built our website, uh, the first website, and it was built very, very quickly, uh, <laughs> um, the description, I mean, the homepage said, uh, female-powered mm -hmm. growth marketing for women entrepreneurs, you know, for by women marketers, women, women, women. Now, it doesn't say anything like that. It just says growth marketing agency, female-powered. So it still has, you know, it's part of our brand. It still has it, but it's not the main message. Um, perhaps it has to do with me personally, right? I don't, uh, I'm not this um, angry anymore because, you know, there's an anger. Of, <laughs> you know that. I mean, if you go through injustice, you are angry. So you want to fix it. Now that I'm confident that I have, managed to do things my own way i'm not angry anymore so i can say you know first and foremost we are marketers mm -hmm. and uh you know so it happens that yes we are fe we are female powered but we have men wanting to work with us right for us so you know i don't say no it's it's fine so it's not uh sex oriented right and now this thing also is very fluent to be honest we have to listen to these things um so yeah it was very natural it wasn't strategic at all and i think that it's very important to listen to your instinct your heart liking what you do so that's how i express what we do right now uh and again if you have it in your in the name the company is still called growth girls then you don't need to explain much more <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, see, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. And you said that in the beginning, uh, you had your own clients uh, because you were already, uh, you know, doing this job as a as a marketer, as yeah. as, as a freelance. Uh, and then you know, like you brought those clients in 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 the company. Yeah. Uh, what does it change when you do that? I mean, it's quite different to uh, you know manage clients as a freelance and then. Uh, move them into an agency, you know, yeah. with a structure, you know, with, with a team, uh, with different processes and, you know, and frameworks and, and tools. Uh, how was that? Yeah, well, the way we do it is not too different because I'm very, very involved and very hands-on uh, in all the projects, 
that's how we do it. So I'm not like I don't operate like the, the high level account manager or, or anything. I'm very hands on. So I'm part of the team that runs the projects. And we don't have uh, like we do have very strict processes uh, so that uh, we are very efficient. Uh, but we don't have like a uh, hierarchy, you know. So when we create teams, it's not like I, my opinion is stronger than the next person's. Uh, so in that in that way, uh, you know, it's like I used to work on the projects. I just now have a, a bigger team. Mm-hmm. And I can offer more services and I can have more projects <laughs> at the same time. Um, yeah, but, and I work more hours because now I have to do all, everything that comes with the territory of one in a company, you know, the logistics and everything. But other than that, it, it wasn't too different for me. And you said uh, actually twice that you are still, you know, hands on uh, yeah. the projects and I love it. Too I much, that... to be honest. <laughs> my, my, my question is, my question is, uh, I mean, I have a lot of friends that, you know, now they run an agency and once the agency, you know, become bigger, 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 you basically stop doing the job because you have yeah. to manage people, do, you know, the CEO and all the, you know, stuff uh, behind the scene. But why is it important, uh, especially in our, you know, field yeah. to to still be hands-on, you know, work on projects, you know, tools and tactics and strategies and these kind of things? Yeah, well, it's a choice. Uh, and uh, I do understand why people make the choice of, uh, you know, not being hands-on and focus on sales, on business growth, which if a CEO doesn't do that, who is going to do it? I do understand why they do it, why they do it and I think that... Um, you know, perhaps it's also easier to scale your company this way, right? Because uh, if you want to be hands-on, how many projects can you handle? But for me, uh, it was, again, a very conscious choice to not do that. First of all, I think that if you want to be top of your league, you have to be the best and know everything that's going on uh, in marketing, which changes all the time. There is no way to do that by just, reading the news you have to put your hands and understand what is what does it mean now i have to do i don't know campaigns without cookies or whatever you know you have to do that you have to experience it at the same time it also makes you a better manager because one you can understand what your people are saying to you uh, you know what's true and what hasn't what isn't um, you know how to strategize better and not ask for crazy things, uh, you know, um, communicate it to, with a client. Uh, so, uh, yes, also, if you want to talk about that, it makes you more flexible as a professional. I mean, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I'm a very good marketer, right? Whatever happens, I can take something and I can grow it myself. No other people need it. And that's what I do. I have have created my own startup which I'm launching um, next month uh, and I'm doing it on my own because this is my personal project and I want it you know uh, to do it how I believe it should be done uh, and I don't want to to lose this skill set mm-hmm. <laughs> plus I like it a lot to be honest it's my passion right yeah. <laughs> that's my passion I love it I, I eat hard I work long hours but I'm happy I open my laptop in the morning and say hey what am I going to do today yeah let's do tracking I don't know <laughs> you know let's read the analytics and understand what, what we're going to do next it's it's very fun for me yeah I feel you uh, I was thinking the same you know now I have people you know uh, reading the analytics running the campaigns but sometimes I just like to do it <laughs> I just like yeah. to do it <laughs> exactly yeah uh, you, you you say something about your startup. Uh, do wow. you want to tell us something a little bit more, or it's uh, too early? Yeah, I can I can talk about some things. Uh, okay. I prefer well, to not say a lot because it's okay, uh, okay, okay. launch, but I can say a couple uh, some things. What I can say is that very important for me to use my knowledge and my skills in other ways, that other than growing other people's companies, right? Hmm. Which I love doing. Uh, but uh, I want to have my own things, my own products. 
uh, and at the end of the day, I want to create something that is uh, that can work while I sleep because we are mm-hmm. in the services business, and you know you have to to create your product as well. That's a smart thing to do. Uh, Plus, being like a marketer uh, for so many different projects, I'm very open to the trends, to new ideas. I, you know, it's very, some people are thinking about uh, what am I going to think and create a startup that will work. I'm exposed to ideas all the time, not other people, but uh, I'm expo- exposed to inspiration for ideas all the time. So for me, and also knowing the market so well, uh, through my job, actually, I I create products. It's not the first one, but for the others, I have partners. This is on my own, what I did, and it has to do with the profession again. It has to do with what we do. Nice. Now, uh, anymore, anything more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, don't worry about it. But now I'm super curious. So uh, we can have, you know, one more episode in the future uh, yeah. once the startup is out and you can tell us a little bit more. But keep, keep yeah. me posted. Yeah, keep me posted. And, uh, and a free, an offer for your audience, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Um, I, was, I was wondering, um, you know, there is a lot of talking uh, about uh, diversity and inclusion nowadays you know, in every field and of course in our field as well. Uh, from your point of view and also from your experience, uh, how is the situation in the marketing world? Uh, yeah. Especially here in the UK because you're a London-based yeah. agency. So I suppose uh, the UK is the market that you know better, right? Yes. Um, yes and no. Yes, I am in uh, in the UK. I'm, I am in England, but most of my clients are in the US okay. and pretty much all over. So... You know, I'm pretty open to what happens uh, worldwide. Um, so diversity, wow, it's a word that in- includes so many meanings because what's diversity, right? It's. <laughs> I think that nowadays anything other than the average white male, as they call it in marketing, everything else is diverse. Which is, is it the case? I don't know. Um Listen, it's still we are doing progress uh, as uh, you know, as humans, uh, as, a, as a society everywhere. Uh, so every profession is male dominated still. Uh, I don't know the numbers. I don't know the statistics, but it's easy to see. Let's not talk about marketing. Let's talk about uh, decision-making positions, C-level executives. Still, it's male-dominated. So, I mean, that has to be true for every industry. So I would say it's the same thing with marketing. What's very, very important, and I think that marketers know that and business owners know that more and more, is that you have to include women and you know, you have to be diverse in any way you you can uh, because every person uh, comes with a different approach to things. So you have to have different views. You have to have different voices. You have to have, uh, you know, uh, whatever someone can bring from their own religion, their own uh, background. Uh, You know, you are in London as well. Uh, so many cultures we have here, so many people from from so many different backgrounds. For me, it has been uh, eye-opening so, so much, hanging out with so many different uh, so people that are so different. So same for companies, right? You cannot just, uh, like, a very good example is me when I choose uh, who is going to work for my company. Some people choose people that look like them. For me, it's the different. The, it's exactly the opposite. I want people that have something different to bring, uh, that they don't look like me, but they don't have the same background and not the same beliefs. I mean, as much as possible, right? So, and I see the value because, uh, I mean, you know, we're not perfect. We have to uh, have different opinions and when it comes to marketing it's even more important yeah i was thinking 
growth marketing is all about uh, lateral thinking, you know, creativity, yeah. having a different approach uh, to the problem. So if you have a team of 10 people and everyone, you know, is the, the same, uh, uh, the, all the same people, I mean, where, where, is the, the, where is the creativity? I mean, where is the, you know, cross-pollination, exactly. the, the, the contamination in, in the team? So yeah, it helps no. also. Yes, you're very true. Sorry for interrupting you, but you're very true. What I wanted to add is that we began talking about soft skills. Mm. So soft skills tend to be very different according to someone's backgrounds as well. And you yeah. need everything, right? Uh, that's true. So that's why I love having, you know, <laughs> uh, diversity. Let's call it like that. You know, you will see that whenever I use a term that has been, I don't know, used a lot i i don't like using it because i think that these words like diversity or whatever we talked about uh, earlier uh some people want to use these as labels to give meanings of their own so i don't want to play this game mm -hmm. i want to do it and not talk about it in the same terms That, that's me as a person, right? That's that's just yeah, my yeah. personality. I, I, I like it. I like it. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't like labels, but yeah. I like, you know, when you actually do the thing. You, If you want to change I, something, you do, you know, the change. Yeah, yeah because, uh, you know, uh, last month I was talking with, uh, actually, I happen to have some clients that are themselves in the HR business. Like, uh, they... they find employees for other companies right that's what we they do and uh they said that we have to find we you know the next next thing is that companies need to be diverse and i said what does this mean and they said you know they have to have women they have to have uh, different religions and they have to have uh, gay people and i said how are you going to hire gay people are you going to ask them are you gay that's insulting So if you're going to say to me, be more diverse and hire gay people, don't just say it. Show me how to do it in a way that makes sense. I'm not going to be asking people about their sexual orientation while I interview them. But that's what the HR companies are saying, which is crazy to me. Because for me, it's all talk, talk, talk. Mm -hmm. But things you cannot do. Uh, so... You know, I don't like to use the words. I don't like to nag about things. Uh, I just want to do it. And uh, like I said in the beginning, that's why I did my own company. I want to do things my way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It looks like you're doing a great job. So, yeah, kudos <laughs> for that. Thank uh, you. Um, Effie, in, uh, usually in the last part of this, um, in this, of this show, uh, we speak a little about... Um, tools and books. I mean, my audience uh, love uh, books and tools. So yeah. let's start with tools. With Do you have any, any, you know, cool tools that you want to uh, share with us? Something that, I don't know, that you are, that you just discovered or something that you use every day, you know, that it's really important in your day-to-day -day job, anything that you want to share with us? Yes. I'm going to talk about two tools. Uh, the mm -hmm. first is more sophisticated and the other is simple, but Um, I'm going to talk about this as well. So the the first one, uh, you know, the AI trend. Not mm -hmm. all AI tools are equal. They're not all very good, but there is one that is very, very good. I use it daily and it saves much of my time because of the of the features. So the way I use it, yeah, I can put a video of, of, of one hour long and it can summarize things for me and I can read it in five minutes. Uh, other than writing blog posts and stuff like that, that uh, everyone likes, uh, which is called Go Charlie. And it has a very cool logo with a dog. Uh, so that's one. And uh, the other tool that I was, uh, you know, I wasn't too curious about earlier and I was saying, oh, come on, it's a, it's a boring thing. But for me, it has been uh, one of the coolest tools is something that you would not believe. Uh, it's actually Canva, <laughs> which, you know, in the beginning I said, oh, come on, you know, uh, people use it because they do not know 
illustrator or whatever and i was looking down on on canva but it's actually uh become a tool i use yet daily so what i do is i have my designers create their templates on illustrator photoshop whatever and then they recreate them on canva and then my whole team can can use them to create awesome presentations and everything and it's it's been uh so time saving for me which means money saving that i have to suggest it to everyone just use canva <laughs> <laughs> but have a designer as well. Don't fire your designers. Keep on having your designer, but have them recreate templates on Canva. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing, you know. Also, uh, speaking about AI, uh, now everyone, you know, with the the new one, what's called uh, Chat uh, Chat GPT, GPT. Yes. Um, yes. and also with Dali, you know, everyone was, oh, you know, now we don't need copywriter anymore. We don't need designers anymore. Come on, guys, that's not the, no. the way we should use AI. AI is here to help us uh, do a better job. Uh, exactly. So, yeah. But I use... always, yes, I always say algorithms need managers too. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's not about the tools, it's about the mindset. You said that before, and, you know, mindset is always the most important thing. Um, so let's move to books. Uh, Book. What so are I... you reading now or, you know, what are some good books that you have read in the last, I don't know, couple of months? Yeah, well, I have two books on my desk because that's what I read this. I have three books, actually. So uh, me trying to be a better leader for women, I have the How Women Rise. <laughs> that's the one. Highly suggested because for me, I saw many patterns that women themselves uh, put into problems by their mindset and uh, being a leader, I can help them solve it and move with, on, with their career. What's the name again? How Women Rise. Cool. Okay. Uh, you'll find the links in the description. So yeah. all, the, all the books and the tools that F is talking about, you'll find the link in the description. Great. The other one I just bought, uh, but uh, actually I was uh, at the Tate uh, for Cezanne's exhibition, you know, yeah. Gary Mountain. And uh, in the shop, uh, they were selling books. And I saw this one, which is uh, Girl Online, a user manual. Okay, that's, mm. that's the one. And it actually, uh, it's very interesting to me because it analyzes how women are represented on the internet. Uh, in many different ways, like how can you exist on the internet uh, as a woman, which I want to read, but it looks very promising. Uh, but I have it here, so I can read a, at least a chapter per day. And actually, uh, I didn't realize I had that, but I'm going to show it as well. Part of what I do, I'm very involved in uh, Web3. Uh, so <laughs> part of what I want to do is a series explaining Web3 to people who don't know many things about it, because Either you know a lot or know nothing. That's what, I, uh, what I've noticed. So for me, being involved, I have lose uh, the understanding of what someone who doesn't know anything uh, needs to hear. So I got this book, which is very, very good. If you want to learn more about Web3, it's Token, token Economy. Mm. Very good. If you want to start learning, it's explained very well. So what I'm going to do with that is find the chapters and then, you know, uh, use them as inspiration uh, to create my own series. <laughs> Is it about, uh, you know, Web3 in general? So blockchain, yeah. NFT, uh, uh, crypto, everything? Everything, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, the nice. Basic, like explaining, because there are people who don't know what blockchain is, right? So either, that's what I see, either you're very involved and you have been <laughs> since the beginning, or you don't know what blockchain is, what are crypto, you know. It's not even, uh, some would say, oh, the older generation. No, it's not the older generation. It's also the younger generation uh, who want to find out more, but uh, they don't know where to look and who to talk with. Uh, so, yeah. And, and also, there is a lot of content on there uh, on the topic that it's, you know, quite, I don't know, useless, fluff. Yeah, uh, I mean, there are people talking about it and they don't actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know, because uh, you cannot be an expert in something that is still 
you know, it's so new. Uh, yeah. So you cannot, I, I don't think you can be an expert unless you are, you know, really involved. Like yeah. it's what you do. Uh, but yeah, it's something that everyone should be aware uh, about, learn about. Uh, not necessarily make a profession out, out of it because everyone, you know, younger people think that ah, I should work in the Web3 space somehow. No, you don't have to, but know what is going on, right? It's uh, you don't, you yeah, cannot yeah. be blind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, Effie, uh, where they can find you, read you, follow you, any links that you want to share with us? Yes, I will share. Uh, so you can put it in the description. I will share my yeah. LinkedIn. I recently started doing my short videos with uh, growth hacks and interesting things. So you can find them on LinkedIn, but also on, on Growth Girls TikTok. Uh, make sure to follow us to whatever channel you prefer. Uh, we have just started. Uh, creating this kind of content and uh, i'm sure you will uh, like it nice nice uh i will put those links in the description as well mm -hmm. effie thank you so much for your time and for being here uh with us for all the insights the useful insights that you shared with us today thank you so much thank you thank you so much it was a pleasure <laughs>